a quick study tips. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, GYN emergencies um, and going to focus on things like the uh, causes of them, like infection, okay? It could be chronic or even an acute infection. We can talk about hemorrhage when it relates from things like the uterus, fallopian tubes, or the ovaries. And of course, we're going to talk a little bit of, about ectopic pregnancy as well, okay? Uh, before I get into that, of course, I have to always talk about why this stuff is important, right? Now, I always tell you this is great for exams because these videos kind of cover the key elements that you'll often see on many EMS exams, but it's also great to build that knowledge base, okay, to help you make better clinical decisions, be better at writing your reports and interacting with your patients, interacting with other healthcare professionals. So it's not just for exams, it goes way beyond that, okay. So kind of keep that in mind as you watch these videos, okay. Um, so before we get into this, of course, we'll talk a little bit about, um, I'll talk about the whole uh, power grava gravita type stuff, okay? People get just a little get a little bit confused sometimes, so I want to kind of cover that before we get too deep into it, just a kind of a, of a, of a uh, frame of reference for you, okay? So we talk about gravita, and that's the total number of pregnancies, the amount of times your patient has been pregnant. And we talk about para, and that is the total amount of live births that a, a patient would have um, had. Okay, so they might have been pregnant, let's say, five times, but they only have two live births. Okay, so the other three could have been, you know, spontaneous abortion or, or elective abortion. Okay, things like that. It could have been maybe a, st a stillborn. Okay, so that's where you kind of get into that. So just kind of keep that in, as a framework. It's good to know this because that's something you're going to document a lot, right? The, like on the, on the left, the uh, right hand side here, where I have G5, P2, you'll end up document that type, type of information a lot on your reports, even when you're doing just simple um, deliveries, okay, or simple labored calls, okay, it's the key el element that you're going to want to document on your reports. Um, I'll talk a little bit about hormones here, guys. Um, you know, this is sort of the rise and fall, stimulating development of eggs in the ovaries, okay, when it all kind of begins. Now, the patient, menzies, mo most people, it's every 28 days when, a, when a, a, a woman goes into having her period, right, having her menzies. Um, most people, okay, uh, they start at the age of between 18 and 14 years of age, Um and menopause starts between 35 to 60 years of age, okay? Uh, so just kind of, again, this is stuff you're going to see these key elements, right? How, how often does a, a woman have a period? When do they start having their period? Okay, uh, you know, things like that. So there's just kind of a frame of reference so that when you're taking your exam, and you're documenting, and just kind of, and you're asking questions to the patient, uh, you kind of have an idea of the, the, how the hormonal end of it is actually working. So some of the questions you're going to want to ask patients, right, that are, that are having a suspected GYN emergency, right? You know, ask them if there's pain or if there's cramping, okay? And of course, you want to get your OP, QRST. Um, is there bleeding or is there discharge coming from the vagina? Is the patient nauseous, they're vomiting, maybe a change in appetite? Um, do they have a fever? Uh, how high is that fever? How often is it? Um, are they diaphoretic? Are they sweating as well? Um, ask them if they have any change in their bowel habits. Okay, are they constipated? Or do they have diarrhea? Um, ask about the urinary habits. Are they, is that changed? Okay, their pain with uh, urination, or do they have blood in their urine? All right, and ask also about pre-existing medical problems as well, whether it's something that's new or something that's chronic. And also try to find out about any surgeries that might be related to, uh, you know, the GYN uh, issues as well, okay? So just some key questions. These are kind of be broad, these are, because you want to kind of be broad on these questions so you get enough information about the whole area that, that you're treating, the whole area you're trying to examine, right? So what about the examination? Um, well, you're going to get your vital signs, you're going to get uh, your blood pressure, uh, your pulse, of course, your respiratory rate, right? Um, 
but you want to keep an eye out for your, for the hypotension. Could be a sign of internal hemorrhage or, or even an infection. Um, your pulse that could be di tachycardic due to dehydration or maybe anemia. Again, infection or pain or sepsis. Right. Check the respiratory rate. Okay, the respiratory rate could be in increased. If and when you examine their skin, cyanosis could be an indicator of anemia or even a respiratory problem going on. Okay, and what about the exam itself, right? You want to notice if there's any blood, any blood coming from the, from the you know, vaginal blood bleeding, whatever. And you're going to try to do that indirectly, right? Uh, ask the patient if they're, if they're bleeding, if they know any blood, and if they know any discharge, right? But you don't want to actually go ahead and examine for blood, okay? And our role as EMS providers are not necessarily you're going to, you're going to have to do on these types of calls, okay? And then their abdomen, palpate for masses, palpate. To check for tenderness, okay. Um, even if you can, if you're skilled enough to check for rebound tenderness, this could be a sign of some sort of inflammation going on in the abdomen as well, okay. Guys, keep in mind, be professional, right? Professional behavior with these patients, okay. Establish some trust with them, build a little bit of rapport with them. Their privacy and modesty limit the amount of people you have on scene. They're not listening to the questions you're asking the patient and, and being nosy and you kind of, you know, telling what's going on with this patient. But this is a private time, a private issue for the patients that have these UN emergencies, right? And pain. There could be significant pain and stress. And depending upon your guidelines and your protocols, maybe you're able to treat uh, pain for these patients as well. So <clears throat> some management ideas, guys, of course, we're always talking about oxygen, treating tachycardia, paying attention to hypotension and pain and IV, you know, for those hypotensive patients. So, of course, following your local guidelines so that you uh, work within your own protocols, right? Some specific emergencies, though, I want to kind of talk about here just to keep an eye out. And again, these are key elements, right? There's a lot of different signs and symptoms for these types of specific, specific emergencies, but you want to keep in mind the key elements that are going to helpfully build on your knowledge base, get you to research a little bit further, and, and make you do better on your exams. So I'll talk about PID, or pelvic inflammatory disease. And this is caused by bacteria. Some of the signs and symptoms you're going to see for this are fever, lower abdominal pain, um, a dis maybe a discharge and some abdominal guarding. Again, this can lead to more serious stuff, stuff like sepsis and even infertility. Okay, a ruptured ovarian cyst. This is sort of common in a lot of patients, but this is when the follicles get stimulated by hormones that we talked about before, and they that can make the the uh, end up enlarging. Okay, and become those cysts, and then they rupture. Okay, now if it's if it's you know something where it's with blood. Okay. You can get you can get significant hemorrhage. Okay, and a patient can be hypotensive. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, and again, you're gonna have pain with that also. Right? What about ectopic pregnancy? This is something we hear all the time. We deal with it a lot in EMS. You hear about it on exams every time you go to any kind of GYN class. You hear about it, right? And it's important. Okay, I've been doing EMS for about 27 years, 28 years. I've only seen this one time, okay, but it can be a life-threatening emergency. Okay, this is when the egg gets implanted outside of the uterus. Again, 1 in 200 people can have this. All right, so consider this um, first for any patient that is between the ages of 12 and 50 years old, especially if there's no kind of indication why they should be in shock, right? It you can have a lot of massive bleeding due to that tubal rupture that's going on. Okay, so this is, you know, a true emergency. So keep that in mind. You get these patients that are complaining of abdominal pain, okay, that are of, of childbearing years, okay? Um, straddle injuries, this can be more common than you think. You get that trauma to that perineum, okay, due to a fall, okay? Um, blunt trauma, again, MVA, physical assault, maybe even a fall from that as well. Okay, or foreign bodies. Okay, pain. Okay, can be done. Bleeding. Don't try to remove the item, guys. Just go ahead and transport. Stabilize the patient. Transport. Treat that hypotension, the tachycardia, IVs, all that good stuff. Okay. Now I want to just kind of wrap this up, guys. Talk a little bit about vaginal bleeding. Okay. Um, many times from can be from a miscarriage. That spontaneous. 
uh, sort of miscarriage that goes on is that the demise of a pregnancy. All right, try to collect any tissue or clots to take to the hospital so they can examine it if they want to, if they need to, to try to help with further pregnancies for the patient. Um, placenta privia, again, one of those things you hear a lot about, right? A lot of things we talk about when we do these sort of presentations and you take OBGYN, um, CEU that talk about placenta privia. You know, that's, a, that's the abnormal positioning of the placenta over the cervical opening, okay? You'll get profuse. Uh, bright red bleeding, but most of the time that bleeding is going to be painless. All right. Abrupt, abruptio placenta is a little different. This is that premature detachment of a normal um, uh, placenta that's positioned, right? But this is also severe. You're going to have severe sort of constant low pain as, a ver as opposed to the placenta privia where you're not really going to have any pain. All right, it's sort of a little bit of a difference there. And the bleeding is going to be dark red blood, okay? So just some things to think about when you get patients that have vaginal bleeding. Uh, lastly, guys, I have an lobotomy. I talk a little bit about sexual assault. Not much we can do for these patients, all right? But, but be professional, be empathetic, show respect, help them cope with, with what's going on with them, okay? Uh, be an advocate for the patient, okay? And and that can be by by just providing a comforting and secure environment for them while you're going to the hospital, okay? Preserve the evidence as much as you can, collect any clothing, and don't let the patient uh, wash or urinate, okay? Because you want to try to preserve that evidence so they can go ahead and do that at the hospital with the rape kits and things like that. But most places, you might have a specific protocol to follow for this, so go ahead and do that. This is just a basic thing. Again, not a lot we're going to do for sexual assault patients besides do a lot of TLC for those patients, right? Okay, so um, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Uh, that's it for this section of the EMS Quick Study Tips. I hope you'll join and engage with me on social media. I'm at EMS Safe on both uh, Instagram and Twitter. You can get me on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash EMS Professional. Okay. Uh, you can also give me a, an email. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. Guys, be, be sure to send me your own minutes, some feedback. Let me know what you think about these quick study tips or send me an idea on some content that you would like to see here on the Monday Minutes. And I'll go ahead and try to create a quick presentation uh, to share with your peers as well. On a, on a topic that you're passionate about in EMS. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, be sure to go to emsofficehours.com as well and check out the previous episode as well as the podcast there also. All right, guys, um, as always, questions, concerns, there's the email again. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office